Hey friends, how's it going? Just wondering in the shop here, I got a little bit of a project I want to do today. What I have here is, this is an original, still 044 Arctic. Uh, this is one of my saws. And uh, I've had this thing for several years. It's, it's a great saw. I really, really like this saw. Uh, I know why they're so sought after. They're just good saws. This thing is bone stock. Nothing done to it. It's not ported. Um, this thing had a broken handle when I got it. I think it fell out of a, a bucket truck or something. Something happened to it. And uh, I purchased this off of my buddy in a box. And it was, you know, it was kind of wrecked. And I put it back together. This is a Farmer Tech rear handle. Um, I've had this handle on here for, I don't know, two years. Never had a problem with it. Um, it fits good. I got a broken gas cap on here. It's one of them flippy caps. Um, so there you go. Old school 044. This is an early 12 millimeter. And uh, this thing's nasty right out of the box. What we're going to do today, our friend David Patterson sent us a new um, chain brake band. Uh, the band was thin in this thing and it broke and uh, I just I haven't gotten one so uh, David being the nice fellow that he is uh, sent us a brake band so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to disassemble this and we're going to do a brake band repair on it um, I've had questions about how to put this back together there's lots of little sir clips and springs and all kinds of things going on in there so let's take this apart on film and repair it First thing I'm going to do, put the saw on its side. I'm going to take the sir clip off. Let's see if we can get this off. There we go. I noticed the aftermarket sir clips that hold the clutch on are uh, too thick. They don't fit properly. Uh, this has a brand new 387 uh, rocket on it. Here's our clutch drum. Bearing. Okay, guys. Uh, I took the front of the muffler off. I want you guys to see this saw is, I think this saw is like a 92. I want you guys to see. Look at this piston on this thing. It's like brand new. Still has the machining marks on it. Uh, I got lucky with this saw. Hey folks, I, uh, I took the spark plug out. I'm just looking. If I have one of my saws on my bench, uh, just want to have a look see of what's going on inside there. Okay, I'm going to take this guide plate off. I noticed this screw's backed out. I'm not sure why that is. Um, okay, I'm going to take this... I call it a guide plate. I don't know if that's what it's called. Okay, take the guide plate off. I have not given this saw a deep cleaning in quite some time. Um, I didn't have as many saws when I got this, so this was like my end of the world you know got to get wood cut saw and uh, it uh, it's performed for me for years this one and uh, I really like it okay let's take this off can't remember what happened to the brake band in this something <laughs> okay just in the mood to run this saw this thing's nasty right out of the box um, Never put a timing wheel on it. Um, I'm sure if I did, the numbers on this saw would be pretty much where I'd want them. And uh, that 440 I did a while back there on the channel, um, that one Caleb has, that thing's nasty, and I didn't even do a ton of work to that. I might actually, I might actually cut another slot. I have lots of these still front covers. And dual port this but it's pretty wide open the way it is okay I'm gonna grab the new band and let's see what we got to do to fit it okay here's your typical still arrangement notice as I move it there's a cam right here that's that spring is to hold it put and I don't think that's an actual factory still spring but hey that's what holds your your lever in and then this this rod there's a big loop in there this is like a dog bone that goes to this linkage 
this all pivots on here this is the spring that snaps it shut and then the end of your the end of your clutch band goes into here okay so all we got to do is get this clipped into there and I can't remember but I believe that I have to take this apart to do that and I'm gonna clean all this look at all the crap that's in there guys um, we're gonna clean that out and give this thing a little maintenance it needs it okay let's see if we can angle you in such a way that you can see now you might be inclined to take all this apart but look if you go straight up and down okay I'll show you guys here on camera if you go straight up and down okay you can hook this end into that little paw there turn it sideways okay now now we just feed this into here putting it all the way around Let's see if we can do this getting it past these little clips that are in here that are molded into the body and now I'm going to take the screwdriver take my screwdriver here see if we can get this into this little spot because I would prefer not to take all that apart if I don't have to there we go just like that and there's a little screw that screws into there uh, let me grab my still fasteners I have a bin here somewhere and we'll replace that fastener I've been meaning to do that for two years so it's time to do it okay grab a nice factory still fastener there we go nice to give this saw a little love uh, I ran this thing quite a bit last winter we were cutting oak this thing pulls a 25 inch full comp beautifully uh, just a good time to check here. just a good time to check uh, make sure everything's tight yeah I will say guys this has been a this has been a great power saw for me um, it's definitely it's definitely a quality saw and it's probably in my opinion I think this might be stills best saw now we could argue about you know but this era of saws in the early 90s um, I think they got these right personally and uh, just trying to shave some weight here this is just packed okay so there's two covers here and just gonna put this cover back on and this one again this thing's not a trailer clean it's uh, it's a working power saw so it's it's clean enough it's just gonna get dirty again when I fire it back up put this fastener in there I might look for a uh, fuel cap that doesn't leak though um, this fuel cap leaks a little bit and uh, it's slightly broken on the one side so we'll have a look for that and uh, I think I'm just gonna run this the way it is with the muffler this has an aftermarket muffler on it I have the OEM one but um, I like the aftermarket mufflers for these they're they're pretty wide open they got a nice big hole on the side and uh, one of these they're just wide open that's typically what I run in my stills um, they seem to do the trick this plugs not too bad and uh, little little sooty um, who knows what I was doing with this thing last time I ran it this thing's been parked for I don't even know how long um, I don't know that band broke last spring so you know it's been it's been sitting around for you know six eight months however long it's been oh yeah this you guys see that this thing's got compression for days um, I have to be careful with this particular power saw um, it will kick back sometimes and will also break starter ropes so I don't know what that is but it came off with the clutch um, interesting I don't see anything worn out just cleaning the crap out of this clutch guys 
and uh, it's full of grease and oil and general debris. You guys know the deal. Okay. Clutch bearing. I'm just going to put a dab of grease. Um, people have asked me how often do I grease these. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a professional cutter. If, if I was running my saw every day, all day, I would probably grease these quite often. Probably every time I took the saw apart for cleaning. So, but I have so many saws, guys, and I don't run them every day. I'm, I'm definitely not the guy to ask about that. Um, I would love, I would love to run saws every day, but um, that's just not the deal for this guy. Okay, we're gonna get this clutch in here. Okay, that works. Okay, there we go. Make sure it catches the oiler. There's a little tab that sticks up, and uh, we're good to go. Put our sprocket bag on. This E clip. Okay, hey guys, this is just what I'm doing today. Sure, uh, a lot of you guys have done this before, but for those of you that haven't, there you go. There you go. We got a working brake band. Um, I kind of, I, I didn't park this thing for that reason. Um, whatever, chain chain brakes. I use saws with chain brakes and saws that don't have them, and whatever. I'm, I'm aware of where my tip is at all times, so I'm not. I'm not one of those people that's super concerned if a saw doesn't have a chain brake. Um, again, if you are, I understand. Um, if if uh, if you need a chain brake, I get it. But yeah, I just I parked this thing a while ago and I just haven't put it back together. Man, this thing's in nice shape. Um, if I'm going to battle, if I'm going to battle, this saw's usually coming with me. This has one of those flocked air filters. Um, again, this thing's stock. It doesn't even have the HD air filter on it. Uh, just a stock Arctic model. And uh, I like it. I might actually change this recoil out. I remember there's something going on with it. But uh, I have a box um, with a couple of two or three good 044 recoils. So I might actually just swap it out. And I think I have a couple with the winter... There's like a winter front uh, that goes on the bottom. I think I have a couple of those. I should have a look here. I oh, got shorted screws. There we go. Again, guys, this is just one of my go-to saws. It's a go-to saw, and uh, it spends a lot of time getting run, and uh, not a lot of time getting maintenance. Uh, I just run this saw all the time. And in this saw has never let me down, other than I have, let's just wipe the inside of this buffer off. I have broken the recoiler open this many times uh, in winter. And uh, that's just what this saw does. Uh, it's got a lot of compression. And uh, I almost want to port it to make it easier to start, but this is like the mintiest OEM top end for one of these that I don't really want to grind on it. I might actually just put an aftermarket top end on this one day and grind on that. Um, that 440 I ported for Caleb, I was really, really happy with that saw. That's, that's one of those saws that I wasn't happy with it when I first ran it and then I did some work to the exhaust on it and uh, changed up a few things, nothing to do with the grinding and that saw just woke up once it was uh, broken in and wow. That was, uh, that was one of them builds, and, uh, sorry guys, Arth Arthritis, my name's Ritus, Arthritis, here we go, and, uh, yeah, I would like to have one of those for myself, because, uh, he actually runs a 36 on that saw a lot, um, cutting big, cutting uh, big dead uh, southern hardwood and uh, that saw is actually that saw actually pulls that really well 
no, these are not the right bottom nuts or bolts, but uh, that's what's going in there. Because I don't actually have the uh, still ones, which is fine. Again, I don't, uh, I don't fuss much over stuff like that. It's just a power saw, and uh, it runs good. So. I'm actually more fussy with other people's saws than I am with my own. Funny how that works, hey eh, guys? There you go, make sure these are tight. Beauty! Okay. Put these back in the still pile. Let's, uh, let's give this thing a little run. I'm going to look for a different cap. I think I have one in all this junk that I have. Give me a second here, guys. We're going to give this thing a run and make sure she's ready to go for when we want to cut. Okay, got this thing all back together. Uh, I swapped the recoil out for a winter recoil with the elasto start. I've been meaning to do that for a while. Let's see if this thing fires up. It's it's been a day or two. Get our tuning screwdriver ready. Let's see. Okay, here we go. 044. Oh, well that's a good recoil. <laughs> Give me a second here, folks. Okay, well, I don't know what the deal with this recoil is, but nothing seems to be wrong with it. I think it's because I'm filming. When you film stuff, uh, for those of you that are starting your YouTube channels, when you film stuff, all kinds of peculiar things happen. And uh, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll try it again, and if it does it again, we'll just throw this back in the parts bin. Well, I, have, I think I have one or two more of these. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to look. Okay. Been a while since I've had a still on the bench. Kind of nice to play with something different. You guys have asked me about 56 Magnums and stuff like that, 041s and that. Uh, never seen one of those here. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, let's get this uh, power saw running. Let's aim it down so you guys can see me starting it. Again, this saw has gobs of compression, so you have to mean it. <laughs> yeah. This thing's been sitting for eight months, probably. said guys this is one of the best saws I've ever owned Ooh. this thing gets me because this thing will fire out here you know where typically a lot of saws they fire a little farther this thing will fire at the beginning of the stroke and uh, that's just me pulling it like I don't mean it into the rotation. 
bring you guys in closer. This is the second or third saw that I ever had on this channel. And uh, I'd already had it for a while at that point, I believe. And uh, this was the first video. Uh, if you go back to the beginning, go uh, oldest to newest. The first video I had of this saw was one of the first ones that people actually watched. And uh, it was the first ones I started actually getting comments on. And uh, I remember uh, Kenzie from Bayou Country Power Saws um, left a comment on this saw. And uh, I was, I can't remember what I was cutting, something. Uh, 30 inch log, I think I had a 25 inch full comp and uh, I was already watching Kenzie at that point and he uh, he commented on the video and, and you know said hey man good job and I, I appreciated that because you know I was just messing around with power saws and it was cool to have you know a, a fellow builder you know on the channel so um, anyhow that's kind of how that went down just cleaning her up again if you guys have never seen a, an arctic model still um i don't know if you can get these in the states um up here you get arctic models and xpgs xpgs are the husqvarna variant uh my xpg does not have the heated handle on it, it has a non-heated full wrap so i can't even show you guys but uh there you go um i believe I can't remember, it's O and I, uh, this thing has a thermostatic controlled carburetor and it will actually, there's a heating element be in front of the carburetor and it will actually heat the carb so that the, the carb doesn't get too cold and freeze and it will heat uh, the grip here and the grip here. I had to rewire this whole saw. And uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I love this saw. I mean, it's got power, it runs good, as you guys can see. But uh, them heated grips, let me tell you, for this guy, when it's really cold out, or even moderately cold, you can always turn them off if your hands get too warm, right? So, um, they do the trick. Again, this thing's got some rash on it, and, you know, it's in nice shape, though, I'd say, for what it is. So I think this is a 92 or a 93 saw. And... Uh, I've enjoyed having it. Uh, it's been, it's just been a good, reliable saw, and it really has enough power to do darn near anything. So, okay, guys, uh, just, just puttering today in the shop. Want to put some different saws back into the rotation, and uh, I thought, you know, I haven't run my 44 in a while. I got that brake band. Thank you again, David, and. Uh, so I just thought, let's put the brake band in this, go over it, tighten everything up, and, and put it back into the rotation of saws. Uh, I like to turn over my saws and just run them all, right, so they all get time on them. So, again, early 90s, 12 millimeter, 044, Arctic, stock, base gasket delete, that's it. Uh, and she's a good running saw. Anyhow. As always, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later, guys.